The last thing I'd like to talk about is the parity check matrix, which is a tool that we use to correct errors. Every code has a parity check matrix H, which, for a valid code word C, obeys the relation H multiplied by C transpose equals zero. If the code word is invalid, the output of applying the parity check matrix H is non-zero, so H gives us a method of detecting errors when they've occurred. To construct the parity check matrix, we start with the equations for the parity check bits. So you're familiar with the equations for the Hamming 7.4 code, and for the best 2 of 3 repetition code, we just repeat the first bit. So if the bits are x, y, z, the y and z bits are just equal to x. Next, we move the right-hand side of the equations over to the left-hand side using subtraction. But since we're dealing with binary, subtraction is just the same thing as exclusive or. Now, these are all actually linear equations. They're all linear combinations of variables, so we can rewrite this as a matrix equation where the right-hand side equals zero. And we can do the same thing for these equations. So these are the parity check matrices H for the two of three repetition code and the Hamming 7-4 code. Let's go through an example of using this parity check matrix for a code word in the Hamming 7-4 code. So here's the code word 1101100. And to find out if it's a valid code word, we take its transpose to get a column vector and apply the parity check matrix to it. In the code word column vector, the entries with ones are the first, second, fourth, and fifth entries. This means that to get the result of this multiplication, we just add the first, second, fourth, and fifth columns of the H matrix. If we do that, we find that the rows all have an even number of ones, and since we're using the ZOR operation for addition, the result is a column of all zeros. So since the result is the zero vector, we've confirmed that this is a valid code word. Now, the thing that's interesting about the parity check matrix is that if we take this valid code word and add an error vector, we distribute the H matrix. When we distribute the H matrix, we find that the part with the valid code word goes to zero by definition, and so we're left with only the error term. And if we take the code word from before and add an error vector, which flips the second bit, the code word term goes to the zero vector, and the error term projects out the second column of the parity check matrix, which gives us this vector, which is called the syndrome vector. The nice thing about the parity check matrix is that the syndrome only depends on the error. If we take another valid code word Q and apply the same error to it, the code word term will again go to zero, and the error vector again projects out the second column of the parity check matrix to give us the same syndrome vector as before. So the syndrome depends only on the error and never on the code word. So the syndrome basically tells us what we need to fix. Because the syndrome vector that was output matches the second column of the parity check matrix, we know that the error was in the second bit. However, notice that if these two errors happen, we project out the fifth and sixth columns, which add together to give us the syndrome vector of the first column. This is another reason why the Hamming 7-4 code can't correct more than one bit error. If we flip two bits, the parity check matrix gets confused and gives us the wrong syndrome vector. The syndrome vector would incorrectly indicate the error was in the first bit. Now, you might recall from a previous video that I introduced this table of the check bit states, or syndromes, for the x, y, z bits, and the corresponding error states for the syndromes. I mentioned the reason that the Hamming 7-4 code can only correct one error per code word is because it only has enough states for each of these seven bits, and one extra state for the no error case. If we take this table and flip it around, and remove the no error state, you'll notice that the x's in the check bit states line up perfectly with the ones in the parity check matrix. What's going on here is that each column in the parity check matrix 
corresponds to a given error state. The first bit, which is the A bit, has its syndrome vector in the first column, and the B bit's syndrome vector is in the second column, and so on and so forth. So we can take the syndrome vectors for each error state and line them up in order to get the parity check matrix. One last thing I'll mention is how to get the minimum distance D from the parity check matrix H. Recall that D is equal to the smallest non-zero Hamming weight in the set of all valid code words, where the Hamming weight is just the number of ones in the code word. To find D, all we need to do is figure out the minimum number of ones required in this column vector to make the output zero. So a single one is not enough because the only way we could output all zeros is if there was a column in the H matrix that was also all zeros. Two ones aren't enough because the only way to output all zeros was if one of the columns was repeated somewhere and we added the column to itself to cancel it out. Finally, three columns are enough to add together to output zero. So that means that the minimum non-zero Hamming weight of a valid code word is three. So the minimum distance is also three. So to summarize this video, we learned about the generator matrix G, which maps messages to valid code words in a higher dimensional space. We can think of the set of all valid code words as the span of the rows of the G matrix. So the set of all valid code words here would be a four-dimensional space with the rows of G as the basis vectors. So while the code word space is seven-dimensional, the set of valid code words forms a four-dimensional subspace of that seven-dimensional space. And the four rows of the generator matrix form the basis for that 4D subspace. Also, when the parity check matrix H acts on a valid code word, we'll get the zero vector as the output. In other words, the set of all valid code words is the null space of the H matrix, the set of all vectors that map to the zero vector. If there's an error in the code word, the output vector will be the syndrome vector of that error and we can match the syndrome vector to a column in the H matrix to figure out which bit we need to fix. We also learned about the minimum distance D, which is directly related to the number of error bits we can correct in a code word. For linear codes, we can easily get the minimum distance D by finding the non-zero code word with the smallest Hamming weight in the set of valid code words. The final topic I'll bring up is general Hamming codes. You've seen the Hamming 7-4 code, but in general, a Hamming code is any code whose parity check matrix H has columns with every possible combination of ones and zeros, excluding the all zero column. This means that for a Hamming parity check matrix with R rows, the number of columns is always 2 to the R minus 1, since there are 2 to the R possible binary numbers with R digits, and we remove the all zero column. Also, R of these columns will represent parity check bits, and the columns associated with the parity check bits are the columns with a single 1 inside. So we've seen the Hamming 7-4 code, which is the R equals 3 case, where we have 8 minus 1 equals 7 columns, and 3 of these columns are associated with the parity bits. And the 3 columns associated with the parity bits are the columns with a single 1 in them. Now notice that if we rearrange the order of the columns, we basically end up counting from 1 to 7 in binary, from left to right. If instead of counting from 1 to 7 in binary, we count from 1 to 15, we get the parity check matrix for the Hamming 1511 code, where there are 15 columns, 11 of which give us the syndrome vectors for message bits. The remaining four columns give us the syndrome vectors for the four parity bits, and again, these are the columns which have a single one. Similarly, if we count from 1 to 31 in binary, we get the parity check matrix for the Hamming 3126 code. 31 columns, 26 for the message bit syndrome vectors, and 5 columns for the parity bit vectors, 
again associated with the columns with a single one. And remember, each row in the parity check matrix describes one of the parity bit equations. So this gives us the instructions on how to compute the parity check bits. And each column of the parity check matrix gives us the syndrome for a particular error type. So when we see a given syndrome, we know exactly how to fix the error. To get the generator matrix for the parity check matrix, we can move all the parity columns to the right side. This is called the systematic form of H. If we take the remaining columns and transpose them, and place a large identity matrix on the left, we get the generator matrix for that code. The identity matrix will copy all of the message bits, and the other columns will compute the parity check bits. In general, for a code that transforms messages of length k into code words of length n, we call the code an nk code. You might also see it called an nkd code, where d is the minimum distance of the code. Since Hamming codes have code words of length 2 to the r minus 1, with r parity bits, the message length is always 2 to the r minus 1 minus r. And with Hamming codes, the minimum distance is always 3, since we only ever need to add up 3 columns of the parity check matrix to get the zero vector. This means that Hamming codes are codes with n equals 2 to the r minus 1, k equals 2 to the r minus 1 minus r, and d equals 3. And since the efficiency of a code is just the ratio of the message length k over the code word length n, the efficiency rate of Hamming codes gets better and better with longer messages. However, since the minimum distance is always 3, we can only ever correct one error bit per code word. So Hamming codes with longer code words might be more efficient in terms of transmission, but their ability to correct errors becomes more limited. In upcoming videos, I'll discuss cyclic polynomial codes and read solomon codes, which are the real codes used by the Voyager probes to send images from space back to Earth. If you like my videos, please check the links in the description and consider supporting me.